It's a normal thing here, Carrie. Keep getting through <laughs> your eyes. You're going to keep being on these press conferences. Um, that was a strange game. You're down 14-2, then you're up by 100 points, and then it's like a three-point game. Just to kind of take me through the ebbs and flows of that game a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, I think a big part of what we're trying to do this year is to keep our lead when we get it. And it's part of – Coach Mary always keeps telling us that it's just going to be a part of us maturing and being able to stay focused when we do have a lead. So that's what we've been working on this year. And I think we kind of fell short a little bit there and we didn't keep our focus hundred percent. We had some turnovers and um, yeah, I think it's a learning process. Part of that learning process is, is I guess I'd imagine learning how to pick yourself up when you're down and, and, and did you even realize you were down 12 points? Is it like, how much do you look at the scoreboard in the first quarter and realize you've got a, a big hole to dig out of? Yeah, I, we realized it. Um, yeah, we got to not let that happen right out the gate. Um, but yeah, we just knew we had to do something then and there or else it would just, we would just keep digging ourselves in a hole. You, you had a career high in the last game, mainly because you were knocking down three pointers from all over the place. You were scoring in a variety of ways today. Can you talk a little bit about taking what the defense gave you and turning that into some other opportunities that maybe weren't from the three point line? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I can shoot the three pointer, but I can also drive and went, especially when I have coming off the game on five for five, I think a big thing was to, to realize that, you know, maybe they'll take me out of my shot. And so I have to adjust to that. Um, but yeah, I thought the team did a really good job of getting each other looks from the three point line and from diving and all different types of ways. So it wasn't just limited to one. And then I want to ask you about Kara she came in and, and gave you guys such a spark there. Mm -hmm. um, I know that maybe she doesn't get a lot of the minutes that everybody else does, but can you, can you kind of uh, yeah. just elaborate on what her role is and, and what, how she's helped the team? Yeah. Kara's a really good shooter. Um, in practice, she's knocking them down all the time. Um, she, you know, she comes in the game and knocks them down. Um, that was huge. It came at a critical point and it gave us a lot of energy. And not only can she shoot well, she also, has really good cuts. Um, and that was something she did today too. She had a nice little cut and a quick little easy two pointer. And yeah, she, she kind of sparked some energy for us. Very good. Carrie, thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. What's up, Grace? Hey. Um, Tough game on Saturday into a game today where you uh, you seem to be scoring at will at times. Um, can you just talk about maybe bouncing back a little bit from uh, from the performance on Saturday to a great performance today? Uh, I just think I try to do what I can for the team. When the team needs me to score, I do my best to try to you know give my team that. And I think it's really fun creating for people, creating shots. So just working a little bit harder and staying focused, bouncing back. You guys were down 14 to two almost immediately. How daunting is that to have to dig out of that hole? Well, when you realize that you're in that deficit early, I think turning it up right away is huge. Um, controlling the tempo and just, like I said, working hard and having to scrape up and that builds a lot of momentum going into the rest of the quarters. You, you, you guys turned it around. Not only did you get back in the game, you then took a huge lead. Uh, what, I mean, what was working, you know, during that stretch? Our defense was, I think our defense was incredible and we were fighting for the boards, working as a team on offense and really um, creating the best offense we could for each other. And the, the more we play together, the better our team is. I, I asked Carrie this, I'm going to ask you this as well. Um, Kara had such a boost there in the in that stretch of turning the game. What do you see from her when she takes the court? Someone who's willing to work hard, um, really play her role for the team. And she's always trying to do the right things within our offense, within our defense. And she's just one of those players that uh, works really hard. Very good. Thank you very much, Grace. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. What's up, Caitlin? Hi, how are you? Good, good. Um, it's a three-point game late. They're coming back. They're, they got all the momentum. It's late in the shot clock. Shea throws you a ball across the court, and you went up with it. So just take me through that play. What did you see? Yeah, um, I just had to be confident because you probably know my shot hasn't been falling that great this season um, from three, but I saw that my player was in and everyone yelled like cap for my player, so I popped out. So, yeah, I just knew I had to shoot that shot. But it was a great pass and great screens from my team. This will sound like a silly question because I'm not a Division One athlete. and Really, my basketball career ended when I was in eighth grade. But, like, how much do you think – during that like do you think oh man if I miss this they could come back and tie it like all all of those different thoughts like are they or is it I'm open let's shoot yeah I, I try not to think when I overthink that's when I'm not as confident so I think that my confidence comes from just playing and not thinking that makes sense uh yeah. you're you guys were down 14 to 2 early um and and, and now kind of we talk about not thinking but you've got to figure out, okay, how do we get back into this? There isn't a 12 point shot that you can make. What did you do have to do to get back in the game? Yeah, I think we just had to take a possession at a time, get stops and turn that over on offense. Um, to just stops and scores, what Mary says all the time. It was, that was the word stops and scores from her? Yeah, mind. she always says we have to get stops and scores. One of the key players I thought in the game was Kara. Um, I, I know that I think you guys are close. I, I know that she's maybe mm -hmm. like a little younger sister for you on the team. Just what, when she comes in and gives you such a spark there in the you know first quarter, what, how proud does that make you as kind of an older, older player on the team? Yeah, it's just exciting to see her. Like she came in and she kind of lit it up for us to like get us that momentum because we were pretty slow to start on offense. So yeah, it's really exciting watching her hit shots and play well. Speaking of momentum, my final question for you, you guys are starting to build momentum. You know, I know you had the game in the middle there, the Miami, Ohio game, but now a second, you know, good home court performance. Talk about the momentum that you can build taking it into Wisconsin. Yeah, I think just the few games we've had under our belt, um, we have a lot of good momentum just going into Wisconsin. Um, I think it's giving everyone confidence and show that each night, like someone else can step up. Um, we can have like a few, like, few big scores other people are doing like if they're not scoring they're still doing big things like having assists or getting stops on defense so everyone's just playing their role really well and it's falling into place and actually this is my final question Satterfield for them um number uh number 11 you know came in as I think one of the top players in the big east and I think you guys limited her to six points and I mm -hmm. think you had her for for a lot of the game that she was in just here how difficult of a task was that going up against her? Yeah, um, she rebounds really well. So we just had to worry about boxing out and rebounding um, the ball before it got in her hands. And in the fourth quarter, she got a few of those rebounds, which kind of got them back in it. But luckily, we were able to get some stops and momentum on offense. Very good, Caitlin. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. You look, you, you have a right to look somewhat exhausted. You were jumping up and down and running all over the floor today when. Yeah, I'm getting a workout with the new way the benches are set up for COVID. I can really get around. <laughs> Move a little bit. Got tennis shoes on. Yeah, you. I mean, you, guys, you look like you were in, in, like you're going to get a workout in with the outfit today. Just um, oh. let's, let's start at the beginning when maybe you paced the most. It's 14 to two. Obviously, not the start you were looking for. Um, what's more surprising, the fact that you fell down 14 to two, or the fact that you eliminated that deficit within a quarter? Um, I don't know. I mean, I thought. Watching them on film, I thought we were going to be able to guard them. And I just think we weren't really dialed into what we were supposed to be doing. And we gave them a lot of easy baskets um, at the rim. I know they hit that first three, but that was something we were going to, we weren't giving them catch and shoot wide open threes, but we were going to force them to beat us from the outside. And we lost um, Clark, who can shoot the basketball. It's just not something she actively looks to do. 
Um, she'd rather drive it and shoot the mid range. Um, and then I thought we were just late to help. We were late on all the drives. We should have been in a position to take charges and we weren't. And so when during that early time out, um, we talked a little bit about that and I thought um, they refocused and did a great job um, getting stopped, right? I mean, they have 14 points. I'm not sure what the minute mark was, but then at halftime, I think they only had 14 the rest of the game or the rest of the half. So. Yeah. Um, in about 15 minutes of work, I thought we did a really good job guarding. And then I thought we figured out pretty quickly that um, we were going to be able to attack them via dribble penetration. And our, our players did a wonderful job of working quickly on catches and attacking the rim um, and finishing layups and creating for each other. And, uh, you know, I think our offense looked like what it can look like um, when we're all on the same page and we're, we have an attacking mentality. So really happy with how they bounced back after the uh, early timeout there in the first quarter. You know, Caitlin, uh, I asked her and, and she gave kind of the cliched, we had to take it a possession at a time answer, right. but that seemingly is what you have to do. And she said that you kept reiterating stops and scores. Yeah. When there is no 12 point shot to hit, <clears throat> what's the message to the team? Well, I think the message to play every possession um, individually is just something we talk about all the time. Like we talk about doing our job every single possession offensive possession, defensive possession, even within your possession, your job can change. Um, and we just want to do our job the best that we can do our job within each possession. And then we have to throw that possession away and get ready to play the next possession. Um, we can't, we need to have a short memory um, about previous possessions and we can't worry about future possessions. And I think that team's really bought into that this year. Um, and I think it's helped them stay a little bit more focused. Obviously we lost that focus late in the game. Um, had some silly turnovers and, and let Xavier creep back into it. But, um, you know, I'm really proud of the first half that they played. Even the third quarter, I thought we did some really good things. And then we're going to have a lot to look at in the fourth quarter and learn and grow. And, you know, I'll take learning with a win any day over learning after a loss. So I'm just happy we hung on. We got some young kids, some minutes, and some pretty um, significant periods of the game. Um, and I think for the most part, they did some good things. So um, overall happy, just got some things we got to clean up and we'll do that and get ready for Wisconsin. Well, let's talk about one of those young players, Kara Van Kempen, I think came in and, and provided a huge boost. Um, yeah. She was plus 24 in the first half and, uh, and made a couple of huge shots. Uh, she doesn't get a ton of minutes except for when she forces you to keep her on the floor, I guess. Uh, just your thoughts on what she was able to do in this game. Um, really happy for her. I, I am, the sky's the limit for that young woman. Like I'm really, really excited about Kara. I think that she could be a real net, uh, matchup problem for people. Um, just because, you know, she's a kid that played a lot of guard in high school and she's a kid that's going to move into more of a four or five role for us. She's learning to deal with the physicality of playing in the post and the rebounding portion of that. Um, and she's grown tremendously in that. Um, but I think her ability to pass the basketball, for the most part, her decision-making is great. She's learning how to drive against more physical players. Um, but I'm really, really excited for her future here. And um, I, she was a huge boost off the bench. I mean, I didn't want to take her out the whole entire first half. So um, really happy for her that she's seeing the results of a lot of hard work. She is uh, – She's a tremendous worker. Like that kid is in the gym all the time. She wants to be so good at the game of basketball and she puts in the time and energy. So anytime she has success, I just am so happy for her. Um, Grace White is someone who maybe didn't have the scoring game she was used to last time out right. and comes out and I mean, just gets to the line 18 times of the free yeah. throw line. Uh, I mean, she hit shots today, but when, when she's coming off a game that she's struggling, how key is it to manufacture opportunities to score by giving to the line? Yeah, we tried to go at right to her. So the first, um, the second play of the game was to get her going. First uh, first play was to try to get Shea going. And then the last play um, had the ability for either one of them on our first three plays. So we wanted to get her involved. Again, like looking at our team versus the, their team, I thought we were going to have an advantage driving in the post. And so we just needed to see who was going to match up with who. Um, and then take advantage of that. And I think, you know, one of the things I was really impressed with this group today is that, you know, our movement, our offense is usually based on a lot of motion and moving. And today we realized we could play matchups and we did a good job screening, getting the switches that we wanted and then driving the kids that we wanted to drive. And I thought Grace did a tremendous job um, figuring out her matchups and her teammates did a, a, 
a really good job of creating space for them and getting out of the way, getting getting their players up and letting her be able to drive to the basket. And then when she gets going, she's a load, man. She's strong as an ox. And she got into people. She finished. She got to the foul line. Um, she was a really, really, really huge piece today. You, you hear NFL coaches will talk about scripting the first 10 or 12 plays mm-hmm. of a game as, as a basketball coach. Are there, it sounded like maybe the first three you had in mind of what you wanted to do. Yeah, I try to script the first couple usually, unless we just don't know how teams are going to play us. We felt pretty confident um, that Xavier wasn't going to switch some stuff. And if they did, they were going to switch mainly like screens, guard to guard, forward to forward. And so we thought we would try to attack some matchups. We wanted they help off the ball side corner. So the first play was to get Shea going in a spread. Uh, we put Ella over there because Ella likes shooting in the corner. A and B, um, post players aren't as good at helping up like Xavier or helping off on the drive. So we thought we would try to get Shea a little, uh, an early quick basket at the hoop. And if they helped, we were going to throw it out to Carrie at the top of the key and let her get a top of the key three. So, um, you know, we had some ideas of getting early looks for people and. You know, it's something we try to do every game, not every game we can, because sometimes, especially in our league, teams know what we're going to do. So they kind of have a they have a crazy plan of how they're going to guard us. And so it takes us a couple of possessions to figure out how they're going to guard before we can make the adjustment of how we need to attack what they're doing. Three more questions for you, and then I'm done. Uh, Carrie, I mean, we've been talking for five minutes now and haven't talked about someone who had a career high for the second straight game. I cannot remember a Valpo women's basketball player who scored 50 in two games in yeah. a long, long time. What's working for her right now? Carrie is just a great basketball player. I mean, I don't know how to say it. Like, I think she really fits how we play. Like, she can shoot the basketball so well that you have to get up and guard her. And she's talented enough. You know, I think the times that she struggles driving the basketball is when she wants to kind of dance around with it and spin and play with it. When she puts her head down and goes to the rim, she usually scores through the contact. And when she – then her counter to that of stopping and stepping through – like she's strong enough to be able to take that contact. But, you know, she's such a talented player offensively. She's a great defender. She gets herself easy buckets defensively by getting steals and and, and deflections and getting out into the break. But, um, you know, her skill set, when I watched her play, when we had the opportunity when she was transferring, when I watched um, her very limited clips from her freshman year, I was like, wow, this kid could be a monster. And you know, she's come in, she's figuring things out. I think her and Grace are both kind of figuring out some things for us, um, along with Kara and Caitlin. And I think, you know, year three, they're just understanding things more. Um, we're just a little bit more mature. And again, like, you know, I think we have pretty much five or six players that the sky's the limit for what they can accomplish individually. And I think the beautiful thing is they're so unselfish that they're going to work to play together the whole time. You know, like they just... And when it's their night, they go with it. You know, we could go to Wisconsin and maybe it turns into it's Shay's night and it's, you know, Ella's night. And, you know, they're ready to step up when it's their opportunity to score, depending on how teams guard us. And um, they're very unselfish young people and they really play hard for each other. And, and that's a beautiful thing to watch. Uh, second to last question, Caitlin Morrison, late in the shot clock, Shay throws a, a beautiful skip pass across mm-hmm. the court. Caitlin doesn't even think. She just said it when she tries not to think because she doesn't yeah. do well. She hits a shot there. Um, huge moment for her. Just talk about that play and, and what you see. It was a huge play. I mean, for Kate, you know, sometimes she struggles with the confidence to take that shot. And I joke with her sometimes I'm more confident than she is shooting the basketball. Um, for her to have the confidence to step up and take that shot in that situation in the game, um, was huge. And I think for her to understand that Shay was willing to make that pass to her shows that her teammates are confident in her to take that shot in the end of the game. And it was 100% the right decision. We put him in an isolation situation. Um, and I'm fortunate to be able to do that late in the game because Shay just continues to make all the right decisions. And our team does a great job. Like she hit that shot, but her three other teammates did a great job capping in the defense and getting her the time to be able to take that shot. So um, they're really figuring that stuff out. And it really, it leads me to be really confident when we have a lead with five, four or five minutes left that we're going to be able to kind of um, milk out the clock a little bit. And obviously tonight um, it didn't look as good as it hopefully will moving forward. Obviously their pressure bothered us a little bit and we turned it over. Um, I think if we would have kept from turning the basketball over, we would have more of those possessions and hopefully it wouldn't have gotten quite as tight as it did down the stretch. And we're going to try to make some of those corrections against the zone. That's, the first time we've seen press this year, and it's just really hard for us to 
um, mimic that in practice. Like we, we don't have those athletes on my staff <laughs> to do it. We don't have those athletes on our bench to do it. And so um, for us to try to mimic that is just really hard. So I think today was great to see that. And hopefully we can watch some film and learn from that. So the next time we see that press, we'll handle it better and not have 23 turnovers in the suit. You've got Wisconsin coming up. Uh, you've played Purdue. You've played Illinois. In a COVID year, how challenging was it to put together a schedule? Uh, you know, on, on the flip side, I see what the men have done with a lot of non-D1s and their games keep getting pulled all over the place. Right. You want to hire Big Ten teams, things like that. Um, you know, how, how does a game like Wisconsin show up on the schedule and how excited is it to get another Big Ten opponent? Yeah, we had Wisconsin on the schedule prior to COVID. Um, it was right. a game that we wanted to play up in that area. Obviously, for Ella as a senior, um, her father playing at Wisconsin, Shea as a junior, getting them back home, Lee as a freshman. You know, we've got some air, kids from that area that have some ties. Um, so it was nice. We had we had plans to get there no matter what. Um, you know, we added the Illinois and the Purdue games once COVID hit. They kind of presented themselves and I figured why not this year like everything else has been crazy let's go try to play really good teams and see what happens and learn from it um and so I'm excited to go up there I hate that we're not going to be able to have any fans up there for those people that are from um Wisconsin but um you know it's another opportunity for to go out and try to get better um it's another opportunity to play against a big 10 team and, and see where you can match up and I think that's kind of been how we've approached those games is we're going to come in and we're going to get our game plan together and we're going to go out and we're going to try to execute it one possession at a time and um, see where the cards fall. And we'll, as long as we go out and we play as hard as we can and we leave it all out on the floor, we can all walk off the floor with our head held high and, uh, and be happy with whatever the result may be. And so that's what we'll do again this week. We'll rest tomorrow. We had some kids above 30 minutes again today. We'll rest uh, tomorrow. We'll start getting prepared on Friday and Saturday before we head up there and, um, Hopefully we can go up there and have a, a good competitive game before we head into Christmas break. And then what were you, are you guys staying in Valpo for Christmas? Will they go home? What, what are the. They're going to go days? home. They're going to go home. I feel very strongly that they, these young people have been put through enough this, uh, this 2020, <laughs> you know, they obviously have been taken out of school and, you know, basketball has been crazy and we weren't able to be home for Thanksgiving. And we've asked them to be really strict with their bubble and, um, you know, we just, as a staff, made a choice that we feel like it's important for them to get home for a few days, see their family, um, spend some time with those guys. You know, we've obviously been tested more than anybody, I feel like, right now, playing three Big Ten teams. It feels like we get tested every day. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, everybody will be responsible while they're home and, and keep to a small bubble while they're at home because they've got to come back here and then we'll make some adjustments to how we practice until we feel like we've kind of cleared the window where possibly COVID could have crept in and um, we'll get back to work and get ready for the first and the second. But um, we're family first in this program and I couldn't imagine asking my kids to stay here and not see their families. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul.